Hi there, talking to Jim McLeod about layer three, layer four networking with F5 distributed cloud services. Jim, um, talk to us about this market architecture once again, now from a standpoint of this use case, uh, which is securely connecting Azure and AWS sites. Absolutely. What we're talking about here is bread and butter multi-cloud transit, which is the core of multi-cloud networking. With multi-cloud transit, what we're doing is connecting a VPC in one place to a VPC or a VNet in another place. And that's as simple as it gets. And for our scenario, again, this is an Arcadia Finance uh, reference application. The core app is running in AWS um, and the transfer module, which is what we want to connect to AWS is in Azure. For whatever reason, multiple teams may be having different platforms that they choose to use. And then you need to connect these services, especially when they're running well, and you don't want to necessarily do a lift and shift or move everything to one cloud provider. But overall, when you have multiple scenarios, then you have complexity introduced. And this is one of the values that we saw when we were working with distributed cloud is having one simplified interface uh, and a way to connect to multiple networks and multiple cloud services through one stack. Nice, Nick, can I ask you one question? What did you choose to use for the transit? Because if you look at the architecture, we've got the F5 global network there in the middle, but we also support bring your own transit. We also support using the internet just with IPsec. Um, if you are a major Fortune 50 customer or Global 500, you probably already have a global network that you can leverage. So did you just use the F5 network on this one? Uh, honestly, just used what was built in. We connected a site uh, AWS site into F5 distributed services. We connected a Azure site in F5 dis distributed services. And in fact, we're going to show a demo of how we did that. And then we connected it together using the global network that we created also in distributed cloud. So um, nice. I'm actually not sure how to answer your question. <laughs> nice. I, the reason I ask is because in the tenancy that we set up for you guys, I believe that we have you using the F5 global network, which as you know, has over 20 pops around the world with multi terabit speed and the fact that you don't know as a developer and don't have to know whether I'm using IPsec, whether I'm running over uh, customer provided transit, whether I'm buying transit from the clouds providers, whether I'm buying transit from F5, that means that as a developer, all you have to do is deploy. That's it what we did. It gets the code faster and it gets that code delivered to customers faster. That's what we did. And in fact, let me show you how we did it. Again, like before, we're gonna show you the before scenario. So here you'll see the uh, coming soon on the left-hand side, on the right-hand side, sorry, um, means that this, this capability isn't turned on. Now, the way we're gonna prove it also is you're gonna see how to, we're pinging now from AWS a IP address in Azure, and we're pinging from Azure an IP address in AWS. And you can see that there is no data received or sent. We can't ping the two resources. Now we cheated a little bit here and, and, the, um, and we already have two uh, sites set up ahead of time for AWS. And all we're doing now is creating the connection. Now, the one thing that we'll be doing here is creating a global network. So think about this as this way, a, a site can be connected to a global network and then another site uh, for example, in our case, Azure is going to be also connected to the same network. So when the two sites are connected, so in this case, we're going to Azure VNet. And again, we're going through and editing this object and selecting the existing uh, global network that we just created earlier, connect global network. It's already there in the dropdown, global net. Now, AWS and Azure are both connected. Uh, and the only step that's remaining for us to do is to configure routes in our cloud providers. So this is the way it's done in, in AWS. And here we have it done in, in Azure. And, and this way, both, um, both are able to access now this global network. And we can ping from each one of the providers, as you can see, quite literally, immediately, this connection. And now when we refresh the page on the right-hand side, you see that this module is not turned on and working. So essentially the AWS backend that runs and, 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 and runs the front end of this application is now able to access the Azure uh, capability for the transaction. And the, the flip side is to say that, yeah, we'll admit it, this was a demo environment and went through and well rehearsed, but if this is part of your standard workflow, if part of your standard workflow is, all right, I need to essentially nail up a VPC between Azure and uh, US East 2 and 
AWS, US West one, it becomes muscle memory. And you can do this this quickly. You're not going to do it this quickly the first time, but you can set up site to site VPN between clouds in five minutes, best case scenario. That's true. And and of course, automate everything because of uh, full yeah. API access and could be part of your CICD pipeline to do the whole things that we did here in the GUI interface to have it command line and be done automatically. And since, and ooh, here's the fun part, if you're using AppStack as the Kubernetes environment for your applications as you're deploying them, now your apps and your networking have awareness of each other within the same API so that you don't have to go through and do calculations or use naming conventions to keep everything straight. True. The objects are linked together logically inside the console and inside the API, which makes it a lot easier to maintain as you move forward. True. Awesome, Jim. Thanks so much for taking the time to talk to us about L3, L4 networking with sites. And we'll be talking about layer seven networking, my favorite next.